Now, if I'm going to swear, this will be the moment. If you're studying chemistry at school or university, you will have to learn about moles pretty early on. Basically, we use the Avogadro number to count atoms, ions and molecules without having to use stupidly big numbers. And if you're not sure about how and why we do that, check the link to the video I made before. But even though the concepts are quite simple, and the maths is nothing harder than we learn at primary or elementary school, people seem to get quite confused about moles. And I think that's because they're quite an abstract concept. You learn how to solve exam questions using moles, but you never really get to see them being used for real. So I thought I'd take you along to the lab and show you how I use moles pretty much every day. So very simply, I need to fill this syringe with a solution of sodium sulfites. Now, if I just estimate how much sodium sulfites to put into my solution, I won't be able to repeat my results with any accuracy. So I need to weigh them out precisely and I need to measure the volume of my solvent and my final solution precisely. So the question is, how do I decide how much to use? So let me just briefly explain some of the chemistry I'm going to do today. First of all, I'm making a buffer. Now, usually we use a buffer to precisely control the pH or the acidity of a solution, but I'm going to use mine as a chemical switch. Now, my buffer is made of hydrogen sulfate ions and sulfite ions in a ratio of 10 to 1. So why do I want this ratio of 10 to 1? Well, because I did a bunch of experiments and I found out that in the solvent I'm using, this is the ratio that gives me the neutral pH of 7 that I want. Now, you'll see that these ions have negative charges on them, so I need some positive ions to balance up those charges. In this case, I'm using sodium. All right, so I'll be using sodium hydrogen sulfite and sodium sulfite to make my buffer. Now, of course, counting out the sodium and the sulfite ions individually is simply not possible. So what we have to do is weigh out a powder. But the question is, how much powder do we weigh out? So one way, of course, would be to find out how much one ion weighs and then multiply that weight by the number of ions that we want. And that's kind of what we do. But what we actually do is find out how much one mole of those ions weigh. And then we multiply that weight by the number of moles that we want. And that way we keep the numbers really simple. So let's have a, a quick look at how we do that. I'll just go through the calculation super quickly. And let's take sodium sulfite as a simple example. Hundred twenty six point zero grams per mole is the number I'm going to use for my uh, relative molecular mass of uh, sodium sulfite. Great, I can do the same thing for sodium hydrogen sulfite too, or I can just look at the jar. There it is. but you still need to know how to calculate it. So how much am I going to weigh out? Well, let's go back a few steps. The first thing we need to get to is the concentration. What concentration do I want? 
Well, I got my first ideas about concentration from a paper that somebody else published about this reaction that I'm using. And then I performed my own experiments and I found that I wanted in the flask a concentration of 0 0.100 moles per decimeter cubed. And the next question now then is how much of that do I want? Well, it would be nice if I could make up one big batch of this buffer and then maybe I could use it over several weeks or months even. And in fact, we do do that for very simple solutions. But for this buffer, unfortunately, it goes off after a few days. In fact, if I leave it out in the air, it's very sensitive to oxygen and it'll go off within one day. If I put it in a glove box, however, with nitrogen and no oxygen, it will last for mm, about a week. So that decides for me how much I'm going to make up. There's no point making a great big batch of buffer like this because I'll have to just make it every week anyway. I've discovered after doing lots of experiments that about five milliliters is just the right amount for one experiment. So if I want five milliliters for one experiment, then it turns out that about a 20 milliliter flask is about right for making up my solutions. I could of course use a five milliliter flask, but that would mean I'd have to make a new solution for every experiment. And also it means I would have to weigh out very small amounts of sodium sulfite, and that is very difficult. Using 20 milliliters, however, means that I will have enough buffer for over three experiments and a little bit spare. So I've got my concentration now, I've got my volume. If I just multiply these two numbers together, that will tell me how many moles of material I want for this experiment. Now, this is the total moles for my buffer, so I need to divide this up into my ratio. Remember ratios from primary elementary school? So we've got the number of moles that we want of sodium hydrogen sulfite and sodium sulfite. We just multiply the number of moles by the number of grams per mole. And that will give us an answer in grams. That's the mass I've got to weigh out now. So off to the laboratory. I'm going to make that solution up now. I'm going to use this glove box right here. Uh, I hope it's not too shiny. And it's always horrible when somebody's watching you work. So I hope I don't get distracted and knock too many things over. Fingers and gloves. Folding these filter papers. It's always very hard when you've got glove box gloves on. Everything's hard when you've got glove box gloves on because these gloves are so thick you can't, you can hardly feel anything. Plus they're too long so I don't know where the end of my fingers are so it's useful to use tweezers and it's so hard not to accidentally tip over a, a flask of solution or solvent as well because it the space is so cramped and you've got so little room for maneuver in these places. It's actually quite stressful. Let's zero that. Okay. All right, so when I'm making up these solutions, I like to start with one of the easiest ones, which is just the dilution. Uh, this is formaldehyde solution. And uh, I just need to dilute this down. It's really easy and it's a great way to start. So use a micro pipette. Doing this in summer is a nightmare. Hands get so sweaty.
This is one of the things I hate about glove boxes. I've just realised I've left a bunch of stuff out. I've left my syringes out of the glove box, which is a real pain in the bum because I'm going to have to take everything off, put it all through the pass box there again and blah, blah, blah. What a load of hassle. I hate these things. Okay, so let's make up my buffer. I'm going to weigh out the sodium sulfite, sorry, the sodium hydrogen sulfite first because it's the easiest one. There's more of it, which makes it easier to weigh out. 0 0.187 grams. That's my three significant figures there. So I'm going to start with a nice big spatula and get us into the area. You can see the problem with weighing out small amounts of, of powder. You have to be so careful. It's so easy to go. Just one nudge too much. Oh, that's exactly what I was talking about. All went off in one go. Luckily, didn't make a mess of it problem with glove boxes is they're very dry which means there's a lot of static electricity and the powders literally jump off the spatula. I should really get an anti-static gun. 1877 just over. Now golden rule with weighing out chemicals is they don't go back in the jar. If you go over, everything has to go into the waste. And that stops us from contaminating that jar of chemicals. So I've got to take a very small, I'm over by five ten thousandths of a gram. Now unfortunately all that I had a little bit of powder left on the spatula, but the static electricity made it all jump off. So I'm going to have to get more out from the jar. That's just a few grains gone on there and that should do it. Okay, 1874, that is just in the zone of acceptability. Also, when I add it into the flask, I expect to lose a grain or two anyway. So I think that'll do. Now all I have to do is get all of that from in there into here without spilling any of it. I'm going to use my homemade funnel. I need a funnel that is small enough to fit in the top, but also non-sticky, non-slippery. And I find that a weighing paper rolled up like this works quite well. Now, if I'm going to swear, this will be the moment. So I try and get it out of the weighing scales without dropping any of it. I'll fold it up into the V shape. Now, move the flask over. Now, if I'm being very careful with my measurements, what I'll do now is measure the weighing paper after I've added the material to the flask and see what it says and just check that everything has gone in and I've got perfect zeros now. So yeah, everything went in. That went okay. Let's do the sodium sulfite. This one's tough. I'm weighing out literally tenths of uh, a milligram now. So I spilt the flask with the sodium hydrogen sulfite in it. Luckily, this is a volumetric flask. There was no solution in it yet. Didn't spill out. Okay, right. It is all in. Give it a shake, make sure it's in there. Usually you add a solid to a liquid, which is what I usually do here. I didn't do it today, and that saved me an awful lot of time. So let's add the solvent. 
and then dissolve it up. And that, I don't know if you can see it, is my buffer, all made up. And because it's in the nitrogen atmosphere of this glove box, it'll be stable for a few days. So I don't need to worry about that. I can just come in for the next few days and just uh, do, do my experiments without having to make it up again. Oof, time for a cup of tea. Well, I was hoping to show you me actually doing the experiment as well, but it turns out that it was a long, busy, busy, busy day. And unfortunately, I did not have a chance to set up the cameras. But I hope at least you've seen uh, some of the process that we go through when we are actually using moles to uh, set up an experiment in the real world laboratory. Well, I hope that's been interesting for you. And if it has, please click the like button, maybe hit the subscribe button and you'll know when the next videos come out. And if you've got any questions or any thoughts, just write them down in the comment section there. See you next time.